Hey guys, I'm Katie with Begging for Balance Dog Training and I'm going to show you today how to size and fit a prong collar. So prong collars can be um, worn by any dog, any size. Um, we don't use prongs to overpower dogs, so that's why we don't only use them on big dogs. The way prong collars work uh, is that if a dog pulls, it will cause pressure on all sides of the neck. So it's even pressure. They're not just pulling on the front on the trachea. So it's actually safer for dogs. Um, they're not going to cause injuries to their necks. I recommend the Herm Springer prong collar. It's not a cheap version. Um, most of the big box stores only sell cheap versions. And the prongs on the cheaper collars are sharp and can actually cause like cuts and stuff to your dog. These uh, Herm Springer has rounded prongs and they're not sharp at all. There's no sharp edges. Uh, so there are two sizes that I use. There is the 2.25 millimeter, which is the small prong collar. And this collar I recommend for all dogs about up to 50 pounds. So the small for about up to 50 pounds, 2.25 millimeter. After 50 pounds and over, I recommend the 3.0. Uh, that is this size collar here. So you can see whenever, if this was on the dog, whenever the dog pulls or if you want to do a correction or apply pressure, it's going to tighten around the dog's neck on all sides. And that's the way we use it is by pressure and release. So <clears throat> this video is to show you how to size and fit the collar. She's about 25 pounds. So we're going to use the small 2.25 millimeter. So when you use this, you're going to want to grab any prong and you're going to want to push up a little bit on the prongs and then you're going to grab and squeeze together one of these until it pops out. And then to put it back in or to put it on your dog, you're going to line these prongs up with these two holes right here, put them in there, squeeze together, and then it's gonna go back in. So anytime you take it on and off, it's gonna be squeezing and putting it back in. Okay, or you can do it on the center plate. This is the center plate right here. Um, you're going to squeeze together and then same thing, just put it back in. Okay, like that. So when your dog wears it, this ring here in the center is called the O-ring or the dead ring. And this swivel ring is called the D-ring. This is going to be where you um, clip your leash onto this. You need to make sure when you put it on that this is not twisted, that the chain is not twisted and it freely slides like this. So you see the triangle and there's no twisting down here in the chain. Okay, so let's go ahead and fit it on her. Squeezing together one of the prongs. I'm making sure that it's not twisted. This is what it would look like if it was twisted. So we'll untwist, make sure the chain is not twisted. Like this, Serafina, come here, come. Serafina, come, good girl, sit. Yes, good girl. So, take this under the neck and back here by the back of her head, I'm going to squeeze, put that on. Now, as far as fit, we want the collar to be up at the top of the neck here. Up here at the top of the neck, worn right across here. This is too loose. Anything down here at the bottom of the neck, in order to do any kind of corrections, you're going to have to use a lot more force. And that's why we don't do that. We put it up nice and tight at the top of the neck, 
so that you don't have to do a lot of yanking on the collar. So I'm gonna go ahead and take off one of the prongs and you do that by the same thing, just squeezing one of the prongs, get one off and then we'll put it back on. See how we do with that. Same thing, I'm going to take both hands, grab the prongs and gently twist it on her neck. Same thing, so when she has her neck up, this is much better. It's staying up at the top of the neck. It's loose enough, it's not super, super tight, but it's staying up toward the top of her neck when she wears it. So I would say that that's a good fit. Um, I could try to take one more out, but uh, I think it's gonna be a little bit too snug. And ultimately, you want this to be able to pop and release. You want it to release back. You don't want all the pressure. Like when, when she's just wearing it, it's not squeezing her neck. So it's snug up at the top, but it's not pushing in on all the prongs. So I like that for as far as fit for her. That's, that's how I like it, way up at the top. And then um, we're gonna teach most of her commands with gentle leash pressure. The benefit of a prong is that you just use very, very mild leash pressure and the dog understands the pressure and release because it's the release that tells the dog that they're doing what they should be doing. And then anytime that they're not, pressure is applied and then uh, it makes it very clear between yes and no. So the prong is a pressure language, if that makes sense. Um, and I teach all the, all the commands by leash pressure and leash guidance. So that's how we fit that. Um, there is a small possibility that the collar could somehow come apart and you could basically lose control of the dog. So to be extra safe, what we do is we use a carabiner, one of these, it's like a little climbing clip, but they make them in different sizes. And what you're gonna wanna do is take that O-ring or the dead ring, which does nothing, this round ring right here. You're going to want to make sure that this chain is out of the way, nothing is twisted, Clip the carabiner on there, and then if this was her flat buckle collar, we could clip it to the little um, loop where you put the tags. You clip it on there. And then if something should happen to the prong collar, if it was to break open and our leash is attached here, we would still have control of the dog by the flat buckle collar. So we just do that as an extra safety measure. Um, I have not had a Herm Springer break open, but there's always a possibility. And so just to be safe, it's a good idea to make sure that you have um, the carabiner on. So what a good girl, huh? Thank you very much to Serafina for being a wonderful model for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, it's very important that this collar is only worn when you are supervising the dog. So anytime they're in the crate, it should be off. And anytime the dog is playing with other dogs, definitely take it off. You don't want anyone getting uh, stuck in this. You want to make sure that you're always supervising when the dog has the collar on. Some dogs will actually have allergies to the metal. So if your dog is having a lot of issues with skin irritation, it can be like a nickel allergy and you should look into, uh, they do make versions of this that are um, hypoallergenic for dogs that have skin allergies. So if you're having any problems with that, make sure to, uh, First, I would make sure the fit is really good because sometimes if it's too loose, there'll be a lot of um, movement of the collar, which will cause um, some irritation. 
but if you um, are still seeing it and you're really, you know, the dog is really, their neck is really breaking out or getting really sore, it's probably an allergy to the metal. So make sure you check into that. I hope that this video helps some people select a prong collar and to fit it for your dog.